Alright guys, today we're gonna be reacting to Museums of Germany, Rex Steve, Europe travel guy. I'm guessing this is a guy that's traveling through Europe. He happens to stop in Germany to check some of the museums that they have over there. We see a lot of people here saying that Steve talking about history is comfort food for my child watching PBS. <laughs> okay, alright. Alright. We're gonna jump in. Make sure you like to subscribe. <laughs> We're just gonna simply jump in. Let's go. This museum, the best of its kind, shows graphically how people were punished in the Middle Ages. Ew. Each feudal state thoughtfully described its cruel and unusual punishments in carefully written laws. Torture, like stretching someone on the rack, God. was only used to get confessions. Generally, just a quick look at these tools got the accused talking. Death penalties were common and came in degrees. Damn. A minor offense, such as stealing, earned you a quick death by beheading. More serious capital offenses, like we have come, we have, we have come so so much of a. Uh, let me just pull myself together. We came a long way, folks. We're not chopping people's head because they committed a crime. But golly, man, these people were not playing around. They would just trip you apart. It didn't like you, basically. Murder with theft earned you a slow death, like having all your bones broken under a wheel before your execution. Bad wow. social behavior was dealt with by public embarrassment via shame masks. Men acting like pigs wore this mask. Gossips, people who heard too much and talked too much, would be locked into this contraption wow. with a bell ringing on top. Quarrelsome people would be locked into a double-neck violin until they worked things out. Nuremberg's Germanic National wow. Museum is dedicated to sharing the cultural history of the German-speaking world. For German history buffs, this museum alone, with a vast and gorgeously presented collection, makes a visit to Nuremberg worthwhile. When it comes to Germany's reputation for fine craftsmanship, its passion for quality goes way back. These finely crafted, centuries-old precision instruments were intricate, wow. innovative, and artful. This is the world's oldest surviving globe, crafted by a Nuremberger. Wow. Since it dates from 1492. Look at that. It looks so, I don't know, like, different. Wow. I cannot even understand. Oh, well, this is Spain right here, right? Got it. Spain, the UK, well, where's the UK here? Here, I guess, right here, Spain, Portugal, France, it's like, it's, something's going on here, Germany's around here, but, like, like, it's kind of, you see what I'm saying, like, it's not, they have an idea, I guess. The Americas are missing. While yep. they understood that the world was round. The Western Hemisphere was still just a huge and mysterious sea. Wow. The delicate wooden Nuremberg Madonna is also 500 years old. This intimate, anonymous carving of the favorite hometown girl was a symbol of the city for centuries. The German painter Lucas Cranach was famous for portraits of Lucas his contemporaries, Kranach. like the great German reformer Martin, Martin Luther. Chronic also painted poignant psychological studies, paintings that came with a message. In The Ill-Matched Couple, the lecherous old man thinks he's got the young maiden, but she looks knowingly out at us, as if to say, he's a fool and he'll get nowhere with me. Mm. The great painter Albrecht Dürer worked in Nuremberg around the year 1500. This is a self-portrait of that ultimate German artist. Wow. Durer, who is from the same generation as Michelangelo and Leonardo, was in tune with the Renaissance. He was a genius with a curious mind, a love of nature, and a passion for realism. After traveling to Italy and seeing how artists were becoming well-paid and respected rather than anonymous laborers, he returned to Germany, bringing the spirit of the Renaissance with him. He painted this portrait of his mother when he was a teenager. While just 19, his passion for realistic detail is already apparent. Hmm. This painting of Durer's teacher was done after his experience in Italy. Its realism was unprecedented in Germany, and it's signed. Again, 
Now the artist will be respected mm. and he proudly included his initials, A.D. Durer was a master at producing engravings from finely etched metal plates. The detail and realism, a trademark of Durer, is extraordinary. As he was famous in his own time, and because many prints could be made from a single master plate and therefore sold affordably, the engraving technique enabled Durer to become the first best-selling artist in history. Wow. And he made a lot of money, enough to purchase this impressive mansion beneath the castle. Today, it's a fine museum about the life of perhaps Germany's greatest painter. A visit here includes a workshop where you can learn about Durer's craft. It's with these tools that the artist engraves an image into the copper plate. Visitors are treated to a demonstration of making a print from the plate. The subject is a hair. That's crazy, right? New respect for these people. These people have... Wow. Have like, a, like an energy for learning. That's crazy. Wow. Durer was famous for his vivid portrayals of the natural world. To be wow. able to enjoy such beautiful yet mass-produced art must have been a marvel 500 years ago. Yeah. To underline the focus on culture, an impressive ensemble of purpose-built museums fill Berlin's Museum Island. Galleries here feature art through the ages, from Egypt and ancient Greece to Romantic Age art that celebrates German nationalism. Before 1871, Germany was fragmented, a disorganized collection of little German-speaking dukedoms and kingdoms. But a unification movement was growing, and artists and intellectuals here were all about legitimizing the notion that Germany should be a single, independent nation. Wow. The old National Gallery is filled with paintings from the Romantic 19th century, which made that case powerfully. Dreamy castles harken back to Germany's misty medieval roots. Heroic struggles were waged for the fun. Man, that's a real picture? German well, no, not a real picture, but that's more before the expressionism, right? Look at that realism. That's crazy. The amount of detail. Look at this in the back cities were idealistic, God-fearing centers of high culture. And romantic patriots dreamed of a land where German-speaking people could raise their beautiful children true to their heritage. That's when it all started, Checkpoint huh? Checkpoint Charlie, the most famous border crossing between the East and the West, stood about here. Once a tense and foreboding place, it's now a garish commercial free-for-all. Where serious military guards once stood, Today, actors pose playfully with tourists. Symbolizing the nerve-wracking standoff of the Cold War, a young American soldier faces East, and on the flip side, his Soviet counterpart faces West. He looks the Soviet, adjacent huh? museum, the house at Checkpoint Charlie, shows how desperation drove East Berliners to all kinds of creative escape attempts. I want to see that. Over, under, and through the wall. Escapees would hide, crammed into tiny cars. This one drove six people to freedom before finally being discovered. In another car, a person was actually oh hidden god. in a false gas tank. Oh my god, this is crazy. How bad was East Germany? I want to, I don't know if you guys know, but you guys can at least tell me how bad it was East Germany. Where people wanted to escape it. How bad it was. Let me know in the comment section. And this vehicle, armored with concrete and iron plates, simply blasted through under a hail of bullets. Exhibits wow. show how tunnels were used for transporting people to freedom. Rooms recall the artful diplomacy of the age, including President Reagan's famous speech. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. Mm. Mr. Gorbachev, Tear down this wall. And the last room celebrates the happy ending, the euphoric days in 1989 when people power literally tore down the wall. Hmm. 
Leipzig remembers its tough That's so crazy, look at that. with a little whimsy. This statue represents how East Germany endured two harsh dictatorships in succession. The flat-palmed Sieg Heil of the Nazis and the proletariat's raised fist the communist. the communist era. This poor fellow, repressed by both regimes with his head scrunched down, seems to represent individuality under siege. My man, it wasn't, uh, it was, it was not their fault, man. Like, they were stuck. Somehow, he'll get through it all. Somehow, I guess so. To learn so. more, step into Leipzig's Contemporary History Museum, which tells the 44-year story of communism in East Germany. After the devastation of World War II, the line between East and West was drawn, and Leipzig ended up in Stalin's camp. In those desperate post-war years, the stability and security provided by East Germany's communist government was appreciated. Out of the squalor came a forced uniformity, and if you played by the rules, life was not miserable. Okay, okay. Housing was a major priority. As so, so it was not that bad, I guess. Based on what this guy's telling us, it was not that bad. Okay. Many were homeless after the war. Locals recall how there wasn't a lot, but people had what they needed. Generally, what they had was what their neighbors had. Hmm. Children all had the same blocks, books, and cuddly stuffed pets. Western pop music, while well reined in and certainly controlled, was allowed. Okay. From the Beatles to Jethro Tull. Very controlled. But of course, people eventually insist on freedom. To learn more, I'm joined by Leipzig tour guide Giza Schoenfeld. The hated secret police force in communist East Germany was the Stasi. Its old headquarters now houses a museum dedicated to telling the Stasi's dirty deeds. It offers a fascinating look at what it took to control the people. This is the symbol for the Ministry for State Security, Staatssicherheit Stasi. Stasi, State Security. Modeled after the Soviet Union secret police, the notorious KGB, the Stasi recruited over half a million informants from wow. every walk of life. It collected mountains of data on its citizens. The former offices contained tools of the trade, a small camera that could be concealed in a briefcase, easy to hide microphones, including one hidden in a button, disguises, and forged documents. The Stasi officers set people on chairs with uh, a piece of cloth, and the piece of cloth would absorb the smell when the suspect sweated during the interrogation. And then they placed the cloth into these jars, preserving the smell. And when it was That's insane. You hear it, you cannot believe it. That's it. That is the insane part. You will hear it, but you don't, you don't want to believe it. There's something weird about it that this sounds smart, right? I don't know how smart that was, but uh, these people really <sighs> Man, that's crazy. This shit is good, man. Something suspicious. I'm I'm out of words. I don't know what to say. They brought in the dogs. The dogs smelled the item and smelled the jars. So the dogs would match the smell. Exactly. And that would be enough to send them to jail. That would be enough. Wow. All mail and packages coming into the country was searched. These machines enabled agents to steam letters open, read them, and then reseal them. The Stasi stole millions in West German hard currency, sent to struggling East Germans by West German relatives. And they confiscated piles of cassette tapes which contained forbidden Western pop music. These cassettes were then reused to record interrogation sessions. <laughs> After freedom, people were free to look at their personal files? Yes, but it was an agonizing decision to make. Uh, the Stasi had hundreds and thousands of informants, so there were colleagues, friends, family members spying on people. Wow. And then it was very difficult to choose. Do I want to know what information the Stasi kept on me? Or would I also, I would also find out. No, just throw, just throw everything away, just burn it, man. At that, at that point, at that point, at that point, just start over. Just throw everything away and just burn everything. Uh, who spied on me? So you could look at your file, but you might find your uncle was informing on you, and maybe you just better not go there. Exactly. Damn, that was so good. Wow. That was so nice, huh? Wow. 
Yeah, might as well, man. <laughs> nah. Just burn everything. <laughs> Forget about it. Forget about it. Don't don't even try. It. Just just burn everything. Man, this was amazing. Wow. Amazing. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one.